All right, so in our exercise one folder, we have online files that we can post, either a, a transparent PNG or a JPEG that filled in the empty space with white, or maybe we turned on the background ourselves in our layers in PhotoP so that those white pixels are part of it. Whatever way, it's all reasonable options for posting. So go down to the end of where you post. This is under assignments, just to remind you. We always post our assignments into a discussion post so we can see everyone's work. This is kind of our, our shared virtual critique wall. And this is our first one. So directions for posting are right here at the end of the step-by-step. -step. There'll only be step-by-step -step for these. So to get credit for your work, you click on reply. You always put your name. That also gives you good visual reference for how big to make your image. Then hit return. And then underneath your name, you're going to use this image upload, just like we have been. And now this is where you put either your PNG or your JPEG. Because we made them print resolution, you know, 8 by 10 inches by 350, they're going to fill the entire, they're a lot bigger than even this. So you want to click on it and resize it to, to a reasonable size with your name, right? Not too small. We want to be able to see it, but my name is, is not that long. So I would say it should probably be about four times bigger than my name. And then we post it. And then it will show up. And it will show up in my stuff to grade and stuff to score and all that. And we can all see it and we're ready for our presentation critique. What size? Um, so I didn't use any of the quality settings for PNG, but the size we set up our pixels for our, for our Photoshop document is 8 by 10 inches by 350 pixels per inch. So keep that, that resolution. Don't shrink it or anything for your PNG or your JPEG. Okay, so now that we've finished with the, the black and white one, we have the option of doing some extra finishing techniques. And those extra finishing techniques can be a lot of fun because we can take that black shape and then we can replace it with color. And we've already done this a little bit. Remember when I use the effects with color overlay? If I just click on that, I don't need to fill that with black. I could also fill it with something else. If I go to, to computer colors rather than web colors, I could fill it with anything. I could fill it with, you know, kind of a, a navy blue. or grayish blue. And then, not only that, under layer effects, which can always be turned off and on, I can always change the opacity of the effect so that the black comes through it. But that's not all that dramatic. That's just like cutting it out of one piece of colored paper. So what if I turn that off, and instead I use a gradient? So gradient overlay will replace all the pixels in that layer. And I can choose what kind of gradient I want to fill it with. And actually, I like PhotoP because it uses the old Adobe Photoshop from about two versions ago, uh, default gradients, which are fun. <laughs> but then you can also customize each of these gradients as much as you want. You can add as many colors in. You can change the colors. This is why it's an extra because there's a lot to dig into here to play with. And then you say, OK, you can change the angle of the gradient. You can reverse its order. And then you can play with the scale of it, like how spread out it is or how tight it is, right, from edge to edge. You can even change it from being a linear gradient to being a radial gradient or an angular one or whatever you want to do, or a diamond one. These are all things we might play with when we're doing type design and poster layout and, and uh, digital coloring a little bit later. But for right now, I'm just going to use a regular linear. I'm going to scale it a little bit differently because that yellow is a little much. So I'm just going to have it hint at the edge. And then I can play with the opacity of that, right? But I'm going to keep that at full opacity. And instead, I'm going to put the color overlay on top of it, take that opacity down so the gradient shows through. 
And then instead of a normal blending mode, I'm going to use one called dissolve. And what dissolve does is it splits into discrete pixels. So it, it gives you like that kind of construction paper, more handmade feel rather than perfect gradients. And I kind of like that. And it's pretty common for digital art. So this is what it actually looks like, which is maybe a little bit more interesting than black. What's cool about layer styles is that they are attributes of the pixels. You are not actually changing the pixels. So they can always be turned off. They can be turned off as a whole by just turning the eyeball off on effects or individually. I can turn off the color overlay or I can turn off the gradient overlay. And here you can see the dissolve of my, my blue on the black. So that's one way to color, but that in my mind is not actually the coolest way to color. So just like we composited all of these images, let's go back to a Google image search. Right, so we go to Google images and I, I did stuff with Felix the cat. Felix the cat is from, I wanna say like 1930s and Felix the Cat was published in black and white. I want color from that same sort of era. So let's look up 1930s uh, color illustration, maybe comics. And let's see, I don't want something that's locked into a grid necessarily, but I want to get a sense of these kind of vintage colors. I like how they give me Cuphead as an example because Cuphead does use those illustration techniques. There's also this one. So I right click, I open link in new tab. I'm gonna avoid Mickey Mouse. <laughs> I like this fantastic comics one, that's pretty nice. And then I right click and I say open image in new tab. And it's not huge. So remember, it might be big enough for what I'm doing but I can always go to tools and I can always limit its size to only large, which would be give me only um, examples that are at least 1,000 pixels in one dimension. Open link in new tab, open image in new tab and see if this is good quality. Yeah, it's pretty good quality. So I'm gonna save both of these. I'm gonna drag them into my folder for exercise one as coloring options, the full size image, even though this one's not very big. Because when you're doing what are called texture overlays, should I do the cuphead one too? Let's see how big it is. Yeah, it's pretty good size. So it's a gameplay screen. Yeah, that's pretty fun. All right, so I've got some different coloring options. Now, what I want you to think of it, like the, my real world analogy is, you have a gift here and you wanna wrap it up. So these are our wrapping papers. So what do we do? We take the wrapping paper, we put it over the layer at the top and then we stretch it over the gift. So I'm gonna use shift and distort this. You can warp it if you want to. I might rotate it. This is like my decorative wrapping paper, okay? It's a smart object, which means I can't delete from it. So if I try to select and then delete, it will say it has to be rasterized. I can actually leave it as a smart object. Instead, I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna go back to my layer. And this can be either one. This could be either my black one that's cut out or it can be this merged one. Or I can make a duplicate, Command J, of the whole thing, and then just turn off the effects. And then it's just a solid black one. I'll use that just so it's easier to see. Remember, I have erased all the white pixels from this layer. So I'll turn off the background so you can see that. Yes. Yes. And also doing effects because all those white pixels will just turn to whatever color you, you decide to turn them all. So the way you can select those white pixels and delete them is when you use your magic wand, like I'm doing right now, 
uh, you had contiguous checked instead of not checked. And so that didn't select the white pixels inside your image. But if you uncheck contiguous, it will select the white pixels everywhere. Yes, absolutely. So I'm going to have uh, contiguous unchecked again. And I'm going to click on the empty space. Because one thing Photoshop is very good at selecting is empty space. But I don't want the empty space. To show you what that selection looks like, you see how the, the dancing ants, the marching ants are on the outside? I want the in, inverse of the empty space. I want everywhere there is pixel. So I go up to select and say inverse. And now I don't have the, that line on the side anymore. That selection comes from the content that remains in my jumble, right? But now I can move that selection onto my wrapping paper. And now I'm going to, like a cookie cutter, cut it out, put it onto a new layer. And I do that with Command-J. Because Command-J not only duplicates full layers and effects, it also can duplicate your selection. Exactly as it is onto a new layer. Command-J. And then I turn on the smart object behind it. And there's my image cut out of that stuff. Right? If I turn on the black behind it and then take the opacity down, this is just another way of coloring it, right? Now let's layer on another piece of wrapping paper because sometimes really fancy gifts, you might have tissue that's somewhat transparent that you're wrapping something with. Let's take this one, which was nice and big. Stretch it out, use shift, rotate it. I kind of like that, that crazy typeface, but I don't want the cropped edge, so I might have to warp it to make sure that all of its, those cropped edges aren't coming onto it. Okay. Stretching it like silly putty around my, my gift. Make sure it's all covered. Hit return. It's still a smart object. But what I can do, just like before, I can go to my image, I'll go to the black one, select the empty space with my lasso, not my lasso, my magic wand, with contiguous unchecked, because remember, this is empty space, then say select inverse, now it's selecting only what's inside of it, move to my wrapping paper, and then hit, make sure that layer is selected, and then hit command J, and then turn off the smart object. Turn on my background, I'll make it big, and now I'll turn on all the different layers behind it of color. This is where Photopea starts to slow down a little bit because I'm doing a lot at print resolution. And you'll see how these things will kind of show through each other. Now let's turn on this one behind and I can play with its opacity too. And maybe put the black one underneath all of that, right? So now I've got a pretty complicated <laughs> colored image, which I might like. And then I can even play with the image adjustments of each layer. So for this one, which is only at 35% opacity, I could always up that. I can always put it on dissolve. So I think it's a little too much for dissolve. But I can also go to image adjustments where before we use levels, we can use that again and brighten it, darken it. But what if I want to change the colors, like make the colors warmer? Because right now they're very pink. I can go to image adjustments and color balance. This is my favorite color tool. It's pretty subtle. And I just, from shadows, midtones to highlights, you can adjust your red, green, blue settings to adjust the temperature of the color. So if I want more yellow, I'm going to up that in the midtones. And then in the highlights, you just play around with it. See the options you get. So that versus, if I go in my history to before I did color balance, versus that. It seems